Tube Blast sent over this rather awesome gaming PC. It's a water cooled GTX 1080 and a water cooled i7 7700K, so I think it's only fair we should take a look at it. Now, I think the best place to start with this is probably the specs. This is a fully water cooled i7 7700K overclocked to 4.7 gigahertz. You also have a fully water cooled GTX 1080 as well, which is awesome. 16 gigs of Corsair Vengeance LPX LED RAM, as well as a Samsung SM961 256 gig SSD, that's an M.2 drive, as well as a Gigabyte Gaming 7 Z270 board. You also have a 3 terabyte Seagate uh, Barracuda hard drive, which is quite nice. Uh, and obviously the full water cooling setup, all housed inside the Coolmaster uh, Maker 5T. Speaking of the master case, it's actually a very nice design. You have tempered glass on both sides, and one of the interesting things is they, they actually have this locking mechanism, so you need one of these two included keys to be able to unlock the door. So make sure that you keep these two keys separate and that you don't lose them, because if you do lose both of these keys, you can't get into your case anymore. This is actually the single best implementation, I have to say, of a tempered glass on a case, though. It's very, very simple. You don't have those really fiddly and just generally naff thumb screws on the four corners. It's just the single lock at the top. You drop the panel in like a normal Mastercase case side panel, and then you just you know, shut the panel up and lock it and that is it, it's done. And I, I really very much enjoy that implementation. The top of the case has a blanking panel that you can take off for extra or less ventilation. You also have some ventilation right under the very nice sort of soft grip handle. So if you do need to carry the case around, that is a very nice way to do it. And you also have the front IO as well. The front IO is actually LED backlit for all of the connections. So if you uh, actually plug the case in and power it on, you'll see that the three USB 3.0, the four USB 3.0 ports actually have 3.0 written above them. You also have a fan controller and an LED controller for the LED bar that is at the bottom of the case. And of course you have the power button, reset button and headphone and microphone jacks. A little bit further down from this you can see the XSPC Bay Res combo unit where you have the pump built into the back and obviously the reservoir is the actual you know five and a quarter inch bay. You also have a little sort of uh, fill meter on the side so if you uh, ever are running low on fluid you can see exactly how much you have in your reservoir. Taking a look inside the case, you can obviously see the very nice uh, aesthetic that this provides. I think when you actually have the PC on, especially since the motherboard is RGB and is set to red by default and the case inside is red and you have that red LED strip at the bottom, the color matching on this is absolutely beautiful and the red uh, fluid as well is just utterly fantastic and a very beautiful thing to look at, especially when it's all powered on. The build looks fantastic though. I had a little trouble with shipping just because of the, you know, likely the courier's fault. But either way, the graphics card actually broke the PCI lock and it actually bent itself quite a bit. Uh, so I did have to sort that one out, but all works fine. And it's actually shipped with a lot of packing material, so you don't need to necessarily worry about that sort of thing. And of course, I'm sure that Chill Blast can sort you out if it does. But either way, it's a, a very nice build. It's very well cable managed. In fact, really impressively well cable managed. If you take a look around the back, which is also tempered glass, although very heavily tempered, Tinted, then you can see uh, just the, the fantastic job that they do with building these PCs and cable managing them. For me, this is a really pretty aesthetic. As I said, it's a very nice thing to look at. And of course, uh, just the, the overall build quality, again, is just really impressive. So if you are planning on buying instead of building, this is a high-end but very nice route to go by. Since this is water cold, I think it's a good time to talk about temperatures. Now, the graphics card temperature for me was about 45 degrees at maximum under full gaming load, which is actually ridiculously impressive. To give you a comparison, my GTX 1080, which is in my desk PC, which is a Gigabyte Extreme Gaming card, a rather big triple fan heatsink, that one runs about 75 degrees under full gaming load, so 45 is incredibly impressive. Now the chip on the other hand wasn't as impressive, it was running at 80 degrees Celsius, which is actually fairly hot. I don't know whether this is due to the setup of the loop where the graphics card takes cold water from this front radiator, heats it up and passes it onto the CPU, and then then the CPU heats it up even further to then pass on to the top radiator and then into the pump and reservoir and then into this radiator and so on and so forth. Or whether it's because it's overclocked to 4.7 gigahertz and the thermal interface material under the heat spreader is really pretty awful. Uh, I don't necessarily know why this is the case, but these are the results that I got. So this is what I'm passing along. In terms of gaming performance, this is really impressive. It's a GTX 1080 and an i7, so it's kind of exactly what you'd expect. This can easily munch through 1080p and 1440p 
1080p and even 4K at very high to ultra settings. All the games that you see here are tested on either very high or ultra settings at 1080p, 1440p and 4K. So as you can see this is a really impressive machine. You're looking at nearly 19,000 points at 1080p in 3D Mark Fire Strike which is a, again a really impressive score. At 4K even in games like Dirt Rally you're seeing nearly 70 FPS average which is uh, again very impressive especially considering that this is ultra settings gameplay. Now this is the sort of machine that I would recommend for 1440p 144Hz monitor type gameplay. I mean GTA 5 is a great example of that. 160 FPS average on very high settings so again just incredibly impressive. Doom on Vulcan is the same story getting 131 FPS average at 1440p on ultra settings and 71 FPS average at 4K and even in Unigen Heaven again obviously 4K is not optimised for Union Heaven as you can tell but at 1440p and obviously especially at 1080p it's just one hell of a machine. So there you have it, that's the very impressive benchmark result, so though of course it does have a rather impressive price to go with it, with this sort of system. I think it's somewhere between £2,700 and £2,800 at the time of filming, so again a fairly, in fact, very expensive system, so that is something to bear in mind. I think if you were to build this yourself, you're likely on the order of saving maybe £100 at most, but of course this is a custom water code system and all that sort of stuff, uh, and also it comes you know, very, very nicely built, so if you're not that interested in you know doing custom water cooling loops if you're not that interested in building PCs and you just want the you know, best performance you can get for your money this certainly isn't a bad option. I don't really have too many cons for this system it really is a, a very nicely built system it's uh, you know incredibly impressive performance of course it is quite expensive uh, and of course the CPU temperature isn't great but I can't necessarily pinpoint exactly why that is so again it's just uh, something to, to make a note of and keep in that uh, keep in mind if you are planning on getting one but as I said, it's very well built, it's very well spec'd out. It's just a really, really impressive system, and if you're after a really high-end system, then this one is certainly a pretty good shout. I think one thing to mention is that even with the uh, you know fans turned all the way down on the fan controller at the top of the case, uh, it is still relatively loud. I believe this is mostly pump noise. There is a little sort of dial on the back that you can turn it down, and that may affect the performance of you know the, the temperature performance. So you might, if you do pick one of these up, might want to have a play with that. So that's just something to note. I think in terms of scoring, I'm going to go with a uh, 4 for 5 money. I think in terms of performance it has to be a 5 and functionality I'm going to go with a 4.5 as well. I think in terms of styling it has to be a 5 and Tech TV score of a 4.5 with a gold award. As I said this is a really impressive system. It's well built. It performs very well so again I'm just I'm really impressed. Obviously again very expensive but that's just kind of what comes with the territory of buying GTX 1080s and i7s. If you want to check out this system I'll leave a link to it in the description down below and of course if you're buying anything from Amazon or Overclockers UK it'd be awesome if you could use the affiliate links in the description down below. They're completely free, you just have to click them before you know actually purchasing your stuff. And either way, it's a very simple and easy thing to do. But even if you're not buying anything from those places or you just don't buy from those places, then it'd be awesome if you could share the video on Reddit or tech forums or Facebook or Twitter, or whatever you fancy. That definitely helps me out as well. And of course, feel free to subscribe and like the video as well. Let me know what you think of the system. Is this you know the, the best thing that you can think of, or is this not your kettle of fish? Let me know in the comments down below and otherwise uh, yeah feel free to check out some of the other uh, videos that I've done in the recent days months and weeks I do videos every Monday Wednesday and Friday and occasionally Saturdays now so feel free to check those out and otherwise uh, yeah thank you for watching hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you all in the next one